In the southernmost part of Spain, the Atlantic Ocean meets the Guadalquivir River, the Guadalquivir, or Great River in Arabic. The sand-laden tides, the wind and the waves compete with the mud, which is drawn by the river from the Sierra Morena, resulting in a changing world. This biological universe, composed of different environmental complexes, has been known as the Doñana National Park, a refuge for migratory fowl from all over Europe. The population in Doñana has always been scarce due to the difficulties imposed by the environment, but even so man has used this land since antiquity. For centuries it was an excellent hunting ground for Spanish noblemen, from Alfonso X, the wise, around the year 1262, to King Alfonso XIII, but it was the daughter of the famous princess of Eboli, Doña Ana Gómez de Mendoza, who retired here to live, and from that moment on these lands came to be known as the Doña Ana Forest. From the earliest time, man has taken advantage of his natural environment to survive, giving way to the development of different arts and trades. Coal merchants, Pine seed harvesters, coot egg collectors, and beekeepers have disappeared from Doñana, while others nonetheless remain. Coquina collectors still use a traditional ancient method for collecting these small clams that live in the sand. Walking backwards, they turn the ground over with their feet, uncovering the coquinas, which then get caught in a rake, and the net tied to the fisherman's waist. of the National Park, the hunters of yesteryear have been replaced by visitors who are more respectful of the natural environment. More than 250,000 tourists visit Doñana each year, providing income which is reinvested in the care and conservation of this protected area. The visits take place in park vehicles accompanied by local guides who are experts in Doñana's flora and fauna. The itineraries are restricted and strict conservation rules must be followed. Thus the impact on the ecosystem is minimized 
while visitors take full advantage of the visit. There are many different biotopes in Doñana, different areas responsible for the park's changing landscape. This variety of biotopes translates into an increased number of species due to the fact that between one biotope and another, the species coexist. All of this environmental diversity owes its origins to the struggle between the Atlantic Ocean and the lands bathed by the Guadalquivir River. Three environmental complexes have emerged in Doñana as a result of this millinery conflict. The marshland, the thicket or system of fossil dunes, and this, which covers the beach and the system of mobile dunes. The tides carry sand and shells to the beach, pushed inward by ocean winds. When the sand meets up with the plant, a dune begins to be formed. The buried plant then dies, and the dune begins to move inward. The movable dunes form dune ropes or trains which move between five and six meters every year in a direction perpendicular to the coastline. Between two trains of dunes, corrals appear as vegetation oases in this sandy world. The small patches of pine help to keep some animals present in this apparent desert. Further on, among the white sand of the dunes, an arid world emerges where it seems that life no longer exists, and yet, looks are deceiving. The elevated isolation of southern Spain increases the ground temperature of the dunes. Reptiles and amphibians, cold-blooded animals, take advantage of this circumstance to set their archaic metabolism in motion, and they frequently can be found in the white sand. However, the heat which favors cold-blooded animals is a deterrent to mammals, and very few enter the sand dunes while the sun is shining. But everything changes at night. An infinite number of footprints demonstrate that hunters have been stalking during the night or simply moving through the sand to enter in one of the corrals, or even further in the ferocious world of the thicket or the marsh. From a biological standpoint, the marsh is the most important area of Doñana, and undoubtedly the most productive, i.e. that which produces the greatest quantity of living matter per unit of time and surface. The floor of the marsh is composed of clayish sediments and becomes inundated every year between autumn and spring by rain and nearby floodwaters. It is thus a system which depends very heavily on water and undergoes season transformations which mark, to a great extent, the rhythm of the entire park. The marsh changes from a lake in wintertime to a fertile meadowland in springtime. Finally, in the summertime, it is converted into a land scorched by the sun and the lack of rain. In one way or another, water is Doñana's lifeblood, and therefore its Achilles heel. Growing urbanization which draws water from the aquifers and dumping into the rivers which nourish the marshes 
threaten the conservation of the most important national park in Europe. Life and death are thus summed up in a single word, water. The shores of the Guadalquivir are one of the few places in the park that retain water throughout the dry summer months. The mouth crabs, a species of violinist crab, take advantage of the mud carried down by the river from the Sierra Morena to feed. Although they are usually found in mangrove swamps, the violinist crabs have colonized these shores, multiplying by the thousands. Males have one pincer, which is disproportionately large and white, which they use during courtship to attract females or to dissuade other males from invading their territory. The enormous white pincer is a useful tool in the tiring task of romance and guarding one's territory. But it is the other smaller and functional one which the crab uses to feed itself and dig the holes where it lives. With the arrival of spring, Doñana becomes a bubbling spring of life. Abundant phytoplankton are produced during this period, which facilitates the proliferation of the water's entire biological chain. The vegetation grows and animals from fish to mammals, and especially fowl, appear by the thousands. It is the season with the best and the most food and the fowl take advantage of this time to bring their chicks into the world, where they rapidly gain weight and become strong. Under the watchful eye of their parents, the chicks learn to fend for themselves. The seaweed and green sprouts are the principal diet for these coots and moorhen. Until their offspring learn how to submerge, the parents are the ones who must dive to the bottom of the ponds in search of food. During their learning period, gallinule chicks must learn how to use their long-toed feet with precision. Gallinules also feed on tender stalks, but they do not dive to get them but rather make use of their powerful beaks and prehensile legs. This task, which is easy for an adult, requires considerable effort by the chicks. Not only must they learn to use their feet, but they must also know how to choose the youngest storks. Like the coots and the moorhens, gallinules also depend heavily on their parents' experience during the first days of their lives. And not only at feeding time, they will also learn from them how and where to hide from the predators stalking the marshland.
Along with the movable dunes and the marshland, and bordering the latter, is the third of Doniana's three main environmental complexes, the thicket of system of fossil dunes. On stabilized dead dunes, a sandy, slightly wavy terrain gives way to a dense and brushy vegetation known as pasture or scrub. It is less dramatic than the marsh, but it houses one of the park's greatest treasures. The Spanish lynx is a different species than that found in the rest of Europe. It is smaller with larger side whiskers and smaller but more numerous locks of hair. Unfortunately, the lynx is seriously threatened. The loss of its habitat, the myxomatosis and viral hemorrhagic pneumonia, decimating rabbit populations, traps, poisons, and illegal hunting have reduced the population to around 400 animals, which have timidly taken refuge in the southeastern part of the peninsula. The largest of Spanish felines finds one of its best refuges in Doñana and plays a fundamental role in the preserve. With the wolves gone, animals which inhabited Doñana until the 20s the lynx is now the only animal that can control the density of herbivores. While the lynx's diet is based on rabbits, fowl and small rodents, it occasionally hunts the offspring of bucks and deer feeding in the marshland. The lynx is not the only hunter in the preserve. The ichneumon wanders through the thicket during the day in search of small mammals, fowl, reptiles and amphibians, and even some invertebrates. It is the only mongoose on the European continent. Its distribution in North Africa and the lack of remains of this species in European quaternary beds have led to the conclusion that it might have been brought to the Iberian Peninsula by the Arabs as a domestic animal. The extremely well-developed senses of the Ichneumon make them efficient hunters Perhaps for this reason, Arabs use them as pets to keep snakes, mice, and rats under control. Two hundred different species of vertebrates inhabit Doniana, and the number of individuals is in the millions. Of the 53 protected species which reproduce on the Iberian Peninsula and the Balearic Islands, 30 of them do so in Doniana, and only five in the park and bordering areas. Of the other 23 which do not reproduce here, at least 10 visit the area regularly. This zoological wealth is due to three principal factors. 
First of all, Doñana has been historically isolated, and man couldn't damage it. In addition, the high productivity of the bogs and the marshes can be considered among one of the highest in the world. And finally, its location between the African and European continents is a decisive influencing factor. When Europe is hit with a cold wave, Doñana receives the fowl which might have been living in intermediate waters. Likewise, when there are extreme droughts in Africa, Doñana is the first point where northward flying birds encounter water. This attracts scarce animals such as the country goose, the horned coot, or the morito, the only European ibis to the Doñana marshlands. Between the thicket and the marsh, there is a strip known as the bank. The large cork trees which mark the boundary are a spectacular congregation point for fowl, which is why these trees have come to be known as the Doñana Avery. In this noisy birthing colony, some 400 spoonbill couples, 100 heron couples, 800 egret couples, and more than 2,000 Espulgabueyes couples have made their nests. The nesting species are arranged in hierarchical order. In the highest branches, the heron and storks build their nests. Below them, on the lower branches, the spoonbills make their nests, followed by cattle egrets and egrets. Even birds of prey seem to have called a truce, a nest or rest, in this disconcerting maternity ward. For the migratory birds of Europe, Doñana is an indispensable place of rest and sustenance. For scientists and naturalists, a key to European nature. And for the visitor, the place described by Abel Chapman at the beginning of the century. The Doñana Preserve has always seemed like a fragment of wild African solitude, uprooted and especially prepared for our personal benefit in this remote corner of Europe. For us, naturalists and lovers of strange savagery, Doñana is nothing short of a paradise on earth. <laughs>